president of the academy, past president of the academy, vice president of the academy, fellows, your excellencies, distinguished guests, students, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of fellows of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, I warmly welcome you to today's inaugural lecture to be delivered by Professor Ajampi, a fellow of the Academy. On behalf of the Academy, I acknowledge the following sponsors who have donated generously to make the program possible. These are Mr. Longest, so please bear with me. Gandor Cosmetics, Install Industries Limited, Coconut Grove Hotels, GN Group Indom, Connect, Madam, Madam Getfried, The Nature Company Ghana Limited, Novel Perfume Limited, Glamour Perfumes Limited, Dr. and Mrs. E. Mensa, Mr. Ladi Nylander, Mr. Sami Bosman, Managing Director, Install Industries Limited, Accra, Mr. Ren Randolph Febby, Mr. Richard Lamte, Managing Director, Digicat, Ghana, Dr. Pa Kwesi Indom, Mr. Simon Opoti Odamti, The Odamtons, Dr. and Mrs. J.E. Mensa, and Elder and Mrs. Mensa Tabi. Shall we please give them a round of applause? The chairman for today's event is Professor Samuel Kofi Sefadede. He is the Vice President Sciences of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences. He is a professor in the Department of Food Process Engineering of the University of Ghana. He is also a fellow of the International Academy of Food Science and Technology. He is also a fellow Kellogg Foundation Leadership Program. He is the immediate vice chairperson of the FAO WHO Codex Alimentarius Commission based in Rome and Geneva. He was the foundation dean of the Faculty of Engineering Sciences, University of Ghana, and he was the chairman planning committee for the establishment of two public universities, University of Energy and Natural Resources, Sunyani, and the University of Health and Allied Sciences, who he was the team lead consultant and develop, uh, he was the team lead consultant uh, for the development and preparation of Ghana's second millennium challenge compact and he's the immediate board chairman of the Mill millennium development authority ladies and gentlemen please help me to welcome the chairman for the occasion Thank you, Honorary Secretary, for the introduction. The President of the Academy, past Presidents of the Academy, Vice Presidents, Fellows of the Academy, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. This evening, the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences has given the floor to one of its new fellows, Professor George Odampton. The professor will be speaking to us on plant diseases, crop production, and food security in Ghana. The profile of the professor is summarized in the program. I'll just highlight a few. Professor George Teria Odampton is currently with the Department of Plant and Environmental Biology of the University of Ghana. College of Basic and Applied Sciences and a former Dean of the Faculty of Science at the University of Ghana. Professor George Odampton attended the Suhum Presby Primary School and was my classmate. He also attended the Osu Salem and 
the Accra Academy. <laughs> Professor Dampton studied at the University of Ghana and has a PhD from the University of Wageningen in the Netherlands in agriculture with specialization in food microbiology and hygiene. He has served as the former head of the department of then botany, and he has a wide interest. His research areas are in plant pathology, pathogenic fungi, storage pathology, fungal toxins, fungal physiology, biological control of plant pathogenic fungi, mushroom science, and food irradiation. Professor Dampton was elected Fellow of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences in 2015. And this evening, he is speaking to this audience on the topic, plant diseases, crop production, and food security in Ghana. Professor Odamton, your audience. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. The choir will give us a short song, then I will give my lecture. I have no other God that you I have no other God that you I have no other God but you I have no other God but you you have done you have done what no man has done you will do what no man can do, so you have done, you have done what no man has done. You will do what no man can do. I have no other God. Come on. I have no other God but you. I have no other God but you. Oh, I have no other God but you. We have no other God but you. You have done, you have done what no man has done. You will do, you will do what no man can do. I have no other God but you. I have no other God but you. Thank you, choir. They are my students, current students. We just completed and they belong to the FEM Foundation Ministries. President of the Academy, past presidents of the Academy, vice presidents of the Academy, fellows of the Academy, 
Pro Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, students, family members, ladies and gentlemen. I'm lost for words for how to describe how I feel as I stand here, but my heart is full of gratitude to God for what he has done. I thank the Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ, who took me through from the backside of the desert to the fruitful grounds that I stand, and he nurtured me, and here I am. I dedicate this lecture to my Savior. To my parents, Theophilus Ayiti Udamtin and Comfort Dewi Udamtin, they are watching from heaven because they are a blessed memory. One is not successful until you have re re reproduced yourself. And that's the business of everyone, especially teachers. I thank my teachers from the primary school to the university, especially one in the university, Professor George Kabaklak, FGA, who is a fellow of this uh, August um, Academy. He introduced me, he introduced the fungi to me and taught me mycology. And he has made me so excited about the subject that I, I hung on to it till today. And it's been refreshing uh, studying these little, little microorganisms. He's now indisposed, and we pray for his speedy recovery. I also want to dedicate this to Professor Ebenezer Lane of blessed memory. He was also my teacher and one of those who nominated me. He was willing without pressure to do it. I thank Professor, late Professor S.K. Danso, also a blessed memory of this uh, uh, academy, who was willing and he was also friendly very, very proactive, pushing me to work hard. I thank Professor E.V. Doku, who is also a member of this academy. And when I became a senior lecturer, he called me and said, you must go to ASPRO. You must go to ASPRO. I said, what do you mean by ASPRO? He said, associate professor and then to full professor. He pushed me. And I thank him very much for the pressure he put on me to enable me to climb the ladder. I thank all vice chancellors of the University of Ghana from Professor Kwapom when I was studying to Professor Ebenezer Wusu, the current president, uh, vice chancellor, for, for giving me the opportunity to exercise my God-given talents in diverse ways in the university. I will not leave out one of our own, Professor Francis K. Aloti, FGA a unique and a humble man with a good heart. Can you please stand up for them to see you? <laughs> Prof, we were chased out of Kwabenya by hooligans and by people who were in, um, in support of the revolution. But you never relented. You followed me up. You kept pressurizing me, saying, you can make it, you can make it. You are a father indeed. Your eyes were on my progress, and I could not stop but keep on running until I have achieved what you desired for me. I thank you very much. <laughs> this lecture is a testimony to your Christian fortitude. And... God bless you for what you did. To all my collaborators in research, especially my supervisor for my PhD degree, Professor E. H. Kampelmaka, Professor F. M. Rambout, my colleagues Fru Inche, Rom, Rom Naut, and my collaborators in the university, Professor S. K. Ofei and Professor K. O. Drew, whom we joined together to produce two PhD theses of great importance to this nation. And I thank you, Professor Fay. You are also here. Please get up, Lennon.
My colleague, who is now the vice president of the science section, was a member of a team of people who came together to work on the May stack burn um, in Ghana. And I'll be explaining to you what this means. Professor Sifadidi, thank you very much for assisting me. I thank one who was once my student, but now has become a big boss. So I don't know how to address her now. <laughs> Dr. Merobodai, he is the current um, the director of the Food Research Institute. And we have collaborated to produce two PhD theses, which I'll be talking about. And she has been very proactive, and I thank her also for the work that she did with me. <clears throat> Last but not least, and I will be doing a second um, appreciation, colleagues past and present in the department and university, students past and present who kept me on my toes and taught me how to be patient in supervising very difficult students. <laughs> Thank you. Now, in any nation, many uh, people domesticate plants and animals for the purpose of uh, regular uh, food supply. This is the priority of many progressive governments to all, uh, in order to ensure food security. The ability of a nation to feed itself is a, a, a yardstick for knowing their progress. But unfortunately, there are situations where efforts are thwarted by microorganisms, and they are of great risk in food contamination, food spoilage, crop losses in the field. Microorganisms appear uh, to have learned to cultivate a habit of destroying plants, even though the plants are growing well on earth. And in continuous association, uh, the crops are destroyed. The association between plants and microbes, fungi, bacteria, viruses, and so on, is as old as the creation of plants. For instance, it is recorded in the Bible, in Amos 4.9, I have smitten you with blasts and mildews, and blasts and mildews are fungi and your figs and your olive uh, trees increase. Palm one devoured them. This is also recorded in Haggai 22, verse 7, Haggai 2, 17. You would ask, what are fungi? Fungi are uh, microorganisms. They are ubiquitous. They are everywhere. If we open a plate here and close it and keep it for seven days, you'll be amazed at the amount and the number of fungi which will appear on the plate. You are breathing in fungal spores as you sit here. Um, the fungi can bring about death and starvation of a nation. I'll give you an example. In 1848, there was uh, the death of about a quarter of a million Irish people because of the cause of a disease called the potato blight, um, Phytophthora infestans. And many people died and many of them immigrated to the United States. President Clinton's great-great-grandfather came from Ireland, and they immigrated because of this potato blight disease. Therefore, we cannot underestimate the ability of plants or fungi to destroy our plants. The same thing happened in Bengal in 1943, where black plant diseases eliminated uh, crops. In Ghana, the, our diseases have been documented by Ofer et al. 2005 and the Drew 2000. But with the new things that we found, this uh, catalog needs to be updated. The application of pre and post harvest conservation helps us to preserve plants. Now, one would ask why are we worried about fungi? There are about 1.5 million species of fungi in the world. Only 10,000 have been described and characterized, but we have several other which have not been characterized, and yet they are there. So we cannot wish them away. Today I'm going to talk about fungi destroying crops. But like all people, we should not talk about 
how they destroy it without talking about how useful they also are. Because often we stress the negative and leave the positive. So let's see the first slide. This is the outline of presentation. We'll go on. The first slide. Or you eat your bread, or you drink your beer, or you plant your crop and it's doing well, know that you are eating plenty. If you eat your cheese, if you go to hospital and they give you antibiotics, penicillin, ampicillin, know that it's a product of a fungus. If you eat your bread, yeast is a fungus. When your crops are growing well, it's a mycorrhizal association between the roots and the, uh, and the fungus. We can use fungi to control insects. And that has become a new area of study, endopathology, endopathology. And we can use fungi to attack nematodes in the soil. So there are various important uses, day to day uses of uh, fungi which we do not recognize, and yet we are benefiting from them. But the most devastating is the way it destroys our plants. And this is a, a picture of a, a hand of a man infected by a fungus, which is a dermatophyte. And this is your bread, which is contributed uh, uh, by growing on it. Your moldy food is a result of a fungus. Next slide, please. We are talking about production. And you can see from here uh, oranges, pineapples, groundnuts, tomatoes, chili, banana, mango, our production within the country from 1962 to 2014. And you can see that we are progressively increasing in many of our products. We are producing more. And this is good news, but there is also bad news. Next slide, please. This is for our cocoa beans, our cashew, and our coffee. Coffee is not doing very well. Cocoa beans is going high. But we have a problem with cocoa. And the idea of plant diseases being uh, pl uh, fungi destroying crops, so far as cocoa is concerned, is too wide for me to talk about it in this short period. So that can be another topic. But the most important thing is that our dry cocoa beans stand the chance of being infected by a fungal toxin called okra toxin. And the international community is now frowning at the presence of okra toxin in cocoa. So if we are not careful, we will end up having our cocoa being rejected, apart from production going down. And that's something that we should uh, watch out. Next slide, please. I'm just comparing uh, the production of post harvest losses in some African countries, Ghana, Nigeria, Tanzania, and so on. Ghana, we are losing. Uh, cassava 18%, Nigeria 26 Tanzania 63%, Malawi 30 and so on and so forth. Next slide, please. The same with maize. We are losing 18%, Nigeria is losing 20%, and Mozambique 17 Next slide, please. If you take the total maize uh, post-harvest losses in Ghana, the uh, dotted lines show us national uh, post-harvest losses from 2000 to 2012. And you can see um, the, the jump, jumping up and down, up and down, until it seemed to be leveling off. But losing over 10,000 uh, tons is not a good indication. Next slide, please. 
This gives us the number of people undernourished in millions in Ghana. From 1990 to 1992, we have about 7 million people who were undernourished. But currently, we are in the region of 1.5 million. There is an improvement. But we can make people, we can nourish people by preserving crops from infection by fungi. And this is what we are talking about. Next slide, please. If you are following the progress of food that you produce right to the time when it reaches the consumer, we have something we call the food pipeline. Here we have that much produce. It goes through pre-processing and you will lose uh, some of the products through breaking the hauling, spillage, insects, mold, and so on. And by the time it reaches the consumer, you have very little left. And this is what we want to, when we are talking about food security, we must intervene between this side and that, so that the marketing will bring out only good products. You remember Joseph in the Bible. He actually preserved food in the pyramid. Like this. And they were able to uh, live seven years of farming. This is because Joseph said food should be preserved. But if we don't preserve food, this pyramid will turn upside down like this. We have a lot of food at the top, but by the time we get to the table, it's only a pin, and we should avoid that. Next slide, please. In the 1992, thereabout, there was a problem of the uh, maize in, in sub-Saharan Africa becoming turning brown as they were kept in uh, woven polypropylene bags. And the, they became brown, discolored, the germs were bad, and it have, the, the maize had to be downgraded in commercial markets and they have to be diverted for animal feed use. This discoloration was severe, and food agencies uh, attempting to distribute stag ben where uh, the food was rejected. So the EU um, tasked a couple of us uh, from Ghana, Zimbabwe, um, Britain, and Portugal to carry out the work to find out what really was the cause of this um, stag burn of maize turning brown and being rejected um, by the um, consumer. So what we did was, first we suspected that it might be as a result of heat, because in the silos of Zimbabwe, you know, they had a lot of grain, and as they packed the, sil uh, the grain into the silos, after some time, one time they came back and they found that there was smoke at the top of the silo. They went in and they found that the grains were burning. This is as a result of heat because of microorganisms, fungi uh, growing. And so they tasked us to find out what really is the cause. And our first thing was to uh, redesign the packaging. And by that time, I had published about three or four articles on the woven polypropylene, which was now becoming very famous in Africa. And so they saw the article and they asked us to use woven polypropylene to see whether woven polypropylene was actually responsible for this. And, the, and we designed a, a lattice pattern where one bag was put in between uh, two or three, leaving a space so that there can be ventilation. Next slide, please. So you see we've stacked the bags, and this is in Zimbabwe. And you can see the space that uh, was left in the back stack. Next slide, please. So you see this like a building, but it is a lattice pattern that allowed ventilation of the, uh, of the grains in stock. Next slide, please. This is me uh, doing the Ghana one at the Food Distribution Corporation uh, um, warehouse in Accra. And we came out to find that, yes, indeed, the, the heating was responsible, but if you ventilate, 
you deprive the fungi of uh, air to breathe and to do havoc to your crop, uh, to the plant. And so we were able to uh, mitigate this uh, problem so that commercial grow, uh, distribution of maize became uh, wholesome maize instead of being given to uh, animals. Next slide, please. The best place to test your idea as a teacher or as a professor is in the graduate students. And so we, we, encounter, we were told about a disease which is called the mango tree decline disease in Ghana. And they had surveyed the whole country and they found that this mango decline disease was traveling from the south to the north. And this is the fungus. It looks very white when it's about two days old. When it's four days, it's turning black. And then when it's about seven days, it's completely black. And this is the mycelium, and this is the, um, the spore. Fungi have no chlorophyll. They are, they are no roots. They have no stems. They have no flowers. But they produce enzymes and degrade the substrate so that they can absorb the nutrients from the plant. So this is the next slide, please. The mango decline disease, which we identified, killed the entire plant in a few months. And you will see that it starts from the tip, like a dieback. Then the leaves begin to roll and become uh, brown. And if you look on the stem, gums are coming out, and we call this gomosis. If you cut the stem, this is a healthy uh, uh, stem completely white, but you see the fungus growing inside the stem, and it, the tree will eventually die. This is a work done just recently, 2016, by one of my students uh, in collaboration with the crop science department. And so collaboration in research in the universities and within the uh, um, CSR system is very good. It produces very good results, and we must um, endeavor to do that. The next one. We surveyed the entire country, and you can see that it's occurring in almost all the places. And the incidence uh, amongst the exotic one and the local ones, the local ones gave us a higher incidence than the exotic. For instance, 62.5% in the greater Accra region and 175 in the exotic. So the disease has come to stay. It is with us. And I'm happy to say that we are presently developing and we found four plants whose extract uh, we are using to control the fungus. We call this biocontrol, but it is too early for me to release the report. So I'll keep it as a secret until <laughs> we come to it. Another uh, disease that we found was the collectotrichum gliosporoides. This was in collaboration with Professor Eskio Fay and Professor um, Udru in Agric. And this is how the fungus looks like, and this is how they are in, these are the conidia, and these are the uh, cultures. Next slide, please. Your mango, when infected, looks like what you see on the board. Unacceptable, cannot be eaten and rejected. So if you happen to have some of these uh, species on your mango, by the time they arrive, they will be rejected. And that's what is happening to us, that many of our, our crops are being rejected. The next slide, please. The same fungus is found on pear, is found on purple, and is found on mango. And so we are in a very complex situation where one fungus can affect so many crops. And so if you intercrop, you are increasing the uh, disease um, incidence. Um, many articles have been published in this, and in the write-up, you, you will see uh, outside the, um, the papers. Next slide, please. If you go to the market, you will see purple rotten like this as a result of fungal attack, what we have just talked about. And they lump this, and sometimes they cut it, and they sell. And we, we go there and gobble and eat. Here is a tomato being brought from the north 
and from Burkina Faso and see how the people are rushing to uh, get their, uh, their share. Next slide, please. But you see rotten tomatoes. This is a sense of a lustrum. This is a fusarium. And fusarium is very poisonous. It produces a toxin which causes esophageal cancer. And people like the tomatoes ripened. Of late, we heard about a group of people who are treating the tomatoes in the field so that you would reddish and attractive. It's no good. Next slide, please. This is pepper on the market, dirty, infected, and yet it's been displayed for sale. And they are put in polythen back, increase the heat, and they will be displayed from day to day. And after one week, it turns like this. And still, they will sell. Next slide. There we are with okra. Okra of various varieties being mixed together. But if you look closely uh, at the edge, you will see that it's infected. And if you open it, the inside is rotten. But they will not discard it because they bought with their own money and they prefer to sell. Next slide, please. This is uh, imported um, onions on display. But this, these onions have been infected by a fungus, Aspergillus niger. It produces another toxin, nigerone, and uh, malformin. Let's watch this video. <laughs> this woman is peeling off the rotten area and is going to sell the inner core. And the inner core is used for preparing stew for um, other things. But the fungus has already deposited the, uh, the toxin inside. And she is happily doing it. And she says that it is her duty to make sure that the goods are sold. Next slide, please. Look at the state in which the markets are. Things are on the floor. The fungal spores are on the floor. The people live and work in an unhygienic condition. And therefore, we increase the problem of infection by fungi. Next slide, please. Our cabbage. Uh, look at the way these uh, fungi are on it. This is a penicillium. That's a penicillium. And penicillium produces a toxin called patulin. At the end of, it, of, this, of the talk, I'll show you. It, it, it works. This is another work in collaboration with uh, Professor Fay and Professor um, Udru, where oranges are affected by a fungus called Guadinidia triacetricapa. A number of publications have come out of this. The fruit is not rotten, but the outside portion looks unacceptable. So at the farm gate, they will not buy it. And so the farmer is at a loss. What this fungus does to the orange is that it reduces its sweetness. It is not as sweet as the healthy one. And so it is a, a loss. And many people are losing their crops as a result of uh, this fungus. Next slide, please. Here we are with our purple and our pineapple and um, plantain or the banana. You see this white fungus? It's called Fusarium verticilloides. Fusarium verticilloides is a very dangerous uh, fungus. As I said, it produces um, a compound called fumonisins. And fumonisins are responsible for esophageal cancer. In Transkai area of South Africa, where they ferment, they use sorghum for producing beer. Many of the people have esophageal cancer, and they trace this to this particular fungus. So when you buy banana and it's getting rotten and you don't know what it is, please don't prepare fruitess from it. Because you peel, whether you, you peel or not, the toxin has gone in. So you add milk, you add uh, egg, you whip and you fry, 
and you are eating and drinking fungal toxins. Sorry, please roll back. This is um, plantain on the market. This looks apparently rotten and the same as this. But the, the market women sell this. And they sell this one as well. Look at the uh, outside of the peel of the, uh, of the plantain. And you have a rich Fusarium verticilloides. So, and this is what they use for preparing krakro. <laughs> so, and this one looks unacceptable, but they will sell it anyway. And because it's cheaper, we'll go and buy the crack the, and prepare crackroo from it. <laughs> Next slide, please. <laughs> yeah, please. It, it's a video. Watch. <laughs> Have you seen the flies all over? <laughs> She's happy packing them for sale. It's next to the good ones. But people will come and choose the bad ones and buy. The story is not different from cassava or yam or cocoa yam. And uh, you see, this is the Madina market, Agogloshi, uh, Abeka market, and Nima market. The way we display our goods on the floor makes it susceptible to infection. And whatever we've been able to bring back to the, uh, uh, to, to the market is already infected. And you know, fungal toxins won't show signs immediately. It's cumulative. As you keep on taking, it will accumulate. No wonder we have a lot of kidney problems uh, in the country, and we have not traced it. Now, this is kokunti. This is what people call the black kalatus. <laughs> They think that the darker it is, the better it is. <laughs> but certainly there is a better way of preserving our goods. Here is palm nut, also infected by the same Fusarium verticilloides, the one I talked about, fumonisins. And yet, they will use the bad ones to prepare the palm oil. And we need to be very vigilant about this, many of the diseases that we are having may have arisen from careless um, consumption. Next slide. This is our cowpea. This cowpea was taken at the market, ready for sale. That's the stall, and this is a magnification of that. Look at the seed coat, already infected, and yet people will go and buy. Now let's look at our storage facilities in the market. Nothing to write home about. This is a place where they store their goods. Exposed to the environment, a lot of fungi, a lot of mini microorganisms. This is where she keeps her uh, 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 onions uh, at Takradi Market. This is another place. She's packed her things, she's gone home, but everything is exposed to the environment. Next slide, please. The same thing. The market stores are like pigeonholes, slotted, and the people are put in no space, nowhere to store anything. So they leave the food there to the vicissitude of the weather and everything. Next slide, please. That's a place where they keep their plantain, at Takradi Market. And when you come to Accra Market, Makola is not different. It's the same throughout the country. We need to reorganize, re-engineer our market system so as to keep our food whole. This one who has closed and has covered everything. Next slide, please. Here you are with um, cucumber being stored in a place which is unhealthy. No wonder the cucumber is getting infection from fungi and is destroying this. And they will cut it and use. This is tomato, that's where they store it. This tells us that we need to learn how to process our goods. 
and we need to learn how to package the goods in such a way that it will be attractive. Our granite production from 2010 to 2014 shows high production but very little processing. This is just to illustrate that we are not processing enough of our food. And yet we have uh, food engineers like our, my, my colleague who can advise, who can teach people how to process food. And yet we like it the old way. Uh, we go the old way when science is here to help us. Next slide, please. I hope you recognize this. These are products from our Food Research Institute. That's uh, maize, this is banku mix, fermented maize, fufu, cocoa yam, granite, gari, fufu, uh, mixed cereals, beautifully packaged. The research has been done, the information is there. Where are the people who take this from the lab into commercial production? Our policy of one district, one factory, this is something that we can easily do because we'll have, we know where the products are, we'll locate the factories there and the manufacturing will be done there and there are experts to advise people as to what we can do. That's another one, not from food research, but this is a banku mix, this is a fufu mix, this is a prensa flour. We went to the shops to see what we have. It's not that the Ghanaian is daft. It's not that we cannot do something which the, uh, the foreigners... It's just because we are slow in picking up and taking up things that scientists have done in the laboratory. And here you are, Fufu, you know, roll back. This is ginger, which is, they put sugar on it. And uh, if you have sore throat and you eat this uh, ginger, it's nice. This is coconut. Coconut with a little sugar on it. And instead of uh, breaking the coconut and eating and throwing it away, it can be preserved. This is groundnut. And agushi, agushi has been uh, blended and bottled nicely like this. Why can't we go on a commercial? And I'm challenging the entrepreneurs who are here to pick up this and help us to preserve food. Otherwise, the pyramid will turn upside down always and will be at a disadvantage. Next slide, please. This is also locally processed natural herbal teas. And it's been done in Ho, in the Volta region, here. I don't think many of us are aware of this. But if we are serious, we can get a lot of foreign exchange from this. Next slide, please. We went around the country taking the phenology. Phenology simply means the occurrence and disappearance of a phenomenon. We're looking for some um, mushrooms, big mushrooms in the field. And this is coprinus. Uh, don't worry about this. You know, Boletus edulis, if you've been to Europe before and you've taken uh, uh, dehydrated so uh, food package, uh, soup, they package it, and if you have hot water, you open and pour and stir. It's Boletus edulis, which they use in preparing and adding a little bit of uh, pepper. Then we have Lepiota prosera. I'll show you how it looks like. We have Pleurotus ostritus, the oil pass, uh, oil, oil palm, no, Pleurotus, the um, uh, Pleurotus ostritus and Bovarella bulbacea. They occur, we can, we have the technology to produce this throughout the year. Bovarella bulbacea can also be produced throughout the year. But Temitomyces lestestui, which is the emery, which you see from the anthill, can, cannot be cultivated, but we know exactly when they occur in the country. Next slide, please. This is the Pleurotus, the oyster mushroom. This is the Eus, which is whitish, and this is the uh, Ostritus, which is uh, brownish in color. And we have produced uh, a two PhD degrees on the cultivation of this crop, of, of this. And we can use uh, lignocellulose, agricultural waste. Rice waste is what we use for this. 
which has never been used before. And that was a collaboration between Food Research Institute and the University of Ghana. This is another um, mushroom they call Ono. They say it's for kings. Kings eat Ono. And this, this mushroom appeared in an ant, ant hill inside my house when I was living in uh, Achimota. And you can see how it, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the body. Next slide, please. This one we know very much. This is Temitomyces lestestri. And this is the, um, the other uh, Temitomyces robustus, um, Atapedra. We took this picture, Atapedra. We know exactly when they appear. We know when, uh, and when it's opened like this, uh, it is not good for, um, the nutrient uh, quality is not good. Next slide, please. This is how the latest tree looks like from the ant hill. This is the ant comb, and this is how they appear and they are harvested. Next slide, please. This is another mushroom called the oil palm mushroom, and we call it domo. I hope you know domo. Domo can be cultivated, and the technology is available. It's been done in the country. But who should take it from the laboratory into commercial? Next slide, please. My team have gone round. We know exactly where all these mushrooms occur and the phenology. And therefore, if we are serious, and as we see shortly, we will be able to harvest these mushrooms and, and, and process them for storage. Next slide, please. I went around the shops. Here is a mushroom from uh, Britain. This is from um, Dubai. And that's a mushroom can. Why can't we do that with our own mushrooms? When we know when they occur and we know what to do with them. And we have food engineers who can help us to preserve this. This is a, a, the oil, the, the mushroom. This is a fresh, fresh from a, a Food Research Institute. And yet the technology is there. Nobody is picking it up. Uh, on the commercial say, government, this is the time for us to be serious with the one district, one factory. We can have a factory of mushrooms together with oranges, pineapple, and so on in one place where we can get them. This is a dehydrated mushroom. We can do it. Why are we just then sleeping? It is possible. If they have done it in Europe, we can also do it. Next slide, please. Next slide. Go to the market and you see them using wooden uh, uh, wawa board for storing um, tomato. And look at this leg here. He's stepping on the tomato. He's putting pressure on the tomato. And by the time it arrives at the, sh at the market, it's already rotten. But we have these good packaging materials available we have plastic, metalloplastica and other people in this country who can manufacture this easily so that we can harvest our crops. And who said that when you harvest your tomato when it's half ripe, it is not sweet? In Europe, they harvest it half ripe and they keep it. And by the time it gets to the consumer, it gets ripened. But we want it red. And when it comes, it gets rotten quickly. We need to rearrange ourselves. The technology is available. And the other thing is that you can wash this and clean it. But the wooden one, you can't wash. It's rather a substrate for the fungus. So the fungus thrives inside. The next time you put your tomato there, you get onto it and start destroying it. Next slide, please. Let's watch this. This vegetable grower is spraying the, man uh, the vegetable with silicon to make it look bigger and fresher. Although this video doesn't come here, it comes from South America. We are very good copiers. We can easily copy. We are beginning to add Sudan 4 to our oil, uh, to our palm oil. And they spray this to make them appear shiny and fresh. Farmers color the vegetables with 
malachite green, which is carcinogenic. And he says everybody in the business is doing it, so why? He says inflation is the reason why he's doing it. Oxytocin can cause psychiatric uh, 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 problems. And the other one is cancerous. And the dye will destroy your liver and your kidneys. We are we may see that this is far away from us, but we are good copiers, good copycats, and we'll begin to do this as soon as we get the chemicals. Now, for some recommendations. Oh, all right, this one. Now, on all the products that we have seen, all the uh, vegetables, the oil, and so on and so forth. We've encountered uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They are very frequently uh, found in our products. Aspergillus alutatius produces ocratoxin A and B, which is a, a nephrotoxin. It affects the kidney. It's well known. A flavors produces four toxins, B1, B2, G1, G2. B1 is the most dangerous. It's carcinogenic and it's also immunosuppressant. It can suppress your immune system. Fumigatus produces fumigalin, A1 tie, uh, kojic. Penicillium expansum, patulin, and citrinin. This also produces patulin, patulin, and trichodermine. So we are not safe if we don't protect our crops and our products from infection. Happily, the these toxins, aflatoxins and other ocratoxins, can be uh, attenuated. The pr production can be attenuated using gamma irradiation. Ghana has a very good gamma irradiation source at Kwabenya, but we are underutilizing it. And many of these products, dehydrated products put in packages, can easily be, de uh, be uh, decontaminated by gamma irradiation. And yet, it's sitting there and nobody is bothered. And I think it's about time we woke up to do something about it so that we can get a prob the problem solved. Next slide. My recommendations are, let's provide access road of good quality to help bring food from the hinterland. Our roads are bad. We produce a lot of food, but many of the products that we have get rotten in the field because farmers cannot bring the food to the place where uh, the food is needed. We should improve our own farm warehousing or produce to produce uh, price stability. There should be value added uh, addition to our farm produce. And this is what I've shown in, in many slides. Agro-processing of perishable and durable products at strategic uh, location. And I am advocating the one district, one factory policy through private involvement and government involvement. We should improve on-farm warehousing to produce price ability, introduce quality control. In Ghana, there is no quality control. Anything goes. If we begin to talk about quality control, it brings um, uh, conflict. And we don't practice grading system. So you go to the market, you want one Olonga, they give you Olonga. Whether the quality is good or not, you pay the same. Except tomato, where they reduce the price for you. And I'm saying that to do the quality control and grading system in, of farm produce, MOFA, Ministry of Environment, Science and Technology, and the Ghana Standard Authority, the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, GSA, CR, CSR, and the university should come together and build consumer awareness on food uh, safety and quality standards, including proper packaging. Our markets have very bad stalls, and the place is not nothing to write home about. We should redesign our markets with proper space for storage and display. And we should preserve our goods from the farm gate. Finally, I suggest that we think about forming a phytopathological society or association, a platform where we can update diseases, predict epidemics, and control measures, etc., under the auspices of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences. 
we know just recently of the army worm problem. We were taken on our ways when there are experts who can help us to mitigate this. And I'm suggesting that the same group come together and we'll be able to do uh, exploits. Now, when I was preparing, I came across a passage in the Bible which showed how Joseph preserved food for seven years in preparation for a lean period of seven years. And how he suffered at the hands of the very people he was preserving the food for. Because his brothers hated him. They sold him into slavery. He went to prison. All because of them. Because when they came back, he gave them food. He gave them a place to stay. And he prepared for them. And I read from Genesis 49, 22 to 24 saying, Joseph is a fruitful bulb. A fruitful bulb by a well. His branches run over the wall. The archers have bitterly grieved him, shot at him and hated him. But his bow remained in strength. And the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. When we come out to do things and people don't understand it, they will persecute us. They will call us names. They will hate us. But let's persist. Let's keep on. Let's hold on. And let's press on. Because that's why God has called us. That we will be leaders in certain areas that men may see that the children of God are people who bring about change. And that's what we should be thinking about in doing. Now, don't give up on anyone maligning you. Or if God is with you, you'll succeed. Many of us have gone through persecution, but God has sustained us. His bow remained with Joseph. His na this nation shall succeed and thrive the stormy times. And we shall succeed in food security also, if only we put our hands to the plow. Let us stop pointing the accusing figure at, at our Joseph, saying that he has a dream. We have a dream, and the dream will come true, because the dream comes from God, and this nation will succeed. Thank you very much for your attention. We sing one song. Yes. Sing one song. The choir will give us one song. Asem pape biamate se oye. Oh yeah, asem pape bia matin se yesu yodo. Oh yeah, oh yeah, ampa. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Asem pape bia matin. Oh yeah, oh yeah, asem pape bia matin se yesu. Your door, oh yeah, oh yeah, Ampa, oh yeah, 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 oh oh yeah, 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 oh oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm saying, Papa, we are not saying, Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Oh yeah, oh yeah, 
I didn't know you could sing like this. I would have made you sing all through the year. I come to the second part of my acknowledgement. You know, in this world, there are helpers. People God brings into your life. So that you can be built up. And often, in some instances when they come, we don't recognize them. But they are sent by God to help us. Along my career, I've had many people coming in my, my way as helpers. I lost my father very early in life. By the time I finished O level, he was gone. And life was difficult. But God brought me helpers. And I want to acknowledge a few of them. Lord Asato Safu, can you please stand? In our student days, he was the SRC secretary, a Christian brother. And I was in dire difficulty. I was non-resident, and it was getting to time for examination that I should be closed. My brother volunteered and paid for the room, bought provisions for me, made me sit, he made sure and bought shirts and other things for me. He thought that I had forgotten. I was waiting for an occasion. God has brought the occasion. <laughs> Said if you had not done that, this occasion would never have happened. I would have failed and I would be walking somewhere in the Gu Guatemala land or what. <laughs> Thank you very much and God bless you. I don't know whether Pepe Raimdorf is here. But if he's not here, ah, he's there. <clears throat> Pepe was a good friend of mine. We all entered the university scene. We could click like that. And we have something we say. Kch -kch 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 -kch. Anywhere he sees me, he will say. Kch -kch -kch -kch. He's one of my sponsors. And I thank him very much for following me up to this time. God bless you. He is married to a fellow of this Akusia, Professor Akusia Pebi, and we were all inducted the same day. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Can my entire family please get up? The Rindov, the Fleshers, the Wayus, the Odamptons. Can you please get up? Can you please stand for us? Professor Kwashi Sam, you are part of the family. <laughs> I thank you all for the support that you've given me. You never lost hope in me. And God richly bless you for praying for my wife and I 
and bringing us up to this stage. God bless you. And I thank you. Is my wife here? <laughs> you are summoned. <laughs> when I was given my inaugural as a full professor in the university, I called him and um, thanked him. Afterwards, some people came to me saying, ah, you shouldn't have done that. Um, you should have done this at home. I learned a lesson from my late uncle, Mr. Gilbert Fletcher. During the 50 golden uh, anniversary of uh, his, uh, their wedding anniversary, he said something which has stuck there. He said, Ghanaians are hypocrites. We wait until people are dead and we come and sing a dirge and we say praises and talk about how good they were. They can't hear. The opportunity is here for us to express our joy and our appreciation for those who have built us up and helped us to come to this stage. And so, without listening to those who are talking, I'm going to say it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I hurt you, but it is on my heart. Nelly, you are a gem inestimable, of inestimable value. You are one in a million. Ghanaians, but me, I like the living. <laughs> you are a mother, a mother of mothers, a woman with few words, but visible action and fruit. God give you long life to enjoy the fruits of your labor. To my children, are you also here? <laughs> if you are here, I summon you to get up. <laughs> you see, God has given you a mother and has reproduced herself in you. That is success, to be able to reproduce ourselves. And I thank God that in spite of my absence from home, sitting down and nagging you and pushing you, you were angry with me, but now you know the fruits of my labor. <laughs> I'm proud of you, and you will go far. God bless you and bless the one, your handiwork and let you prosper in the things your hands touch. Thank you for making me free. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Pastor Roy King. Roy King, can you stand up? He's a pastor. He's just graduated through my, my hands. And uh, he's doing well in ministry also. And uh, we thank God. People will not understand you, but keep on. God will help you. I don't know whether Bishop Joseph Asari is here. He is the father of spiritual father of um, Roy King, Pastor Roy King. And I thank him for giving me the opportunity to be a patron to the ministry on campus. Please convey my gratitude to him. Is Prophet Samson Amwatin here? Prophet Amwatin, my spiritual father, you always said, you are too needed to be wasted. <laughs> and indeed, you have pushed me to know that I'm too needed to be wasted. And uh, I thank you that 
you've helped me to be taken from the back side of life to the front side. God richly bless you. For everyone that I've left out, don't be angry. Um, Jude, Jude Hama, was somebody who was in this, at Legon with me. And he was always pestering me. When are you going to give your inaugural? When the inaugural is here. <laughs> I thank you all for coming, especially my sponsors. Mr. Ladi Nylander, please. Okay. He has been instrumental in arranging for things for this room. A good old friend of mine. And uh, the Indom group, uh, GN group, uh, he worked through them. And I'm sorry that uh, Mr. Indom is, uh, Dr. Indom is not here, but he sent a representative. Thank you all for coming. God bless you and take you safely to your destinations. Thank you very much. Let's recognize the speaker for this very exciting lecture once again. The president of the Academy, Vice Presidents, and Fellows, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I will not attempt to summarize this very, very elusive lecture. Professor Dampton has shown us his faith, his belief, and how it has impacted on his work as a scientist. There is no doubt that Funga, in different names that we cannot pronounce, have both positive and negative effects on our society. It is also true that God has given us the ability to control these for our benefits, to weed out the negative impacts and enhance the positive impact, in, impacts of fungi in our lives. He has encouraged us to do a screenshot of what we do in our markets and how we handle our foods. He's made proposals on what we can do. This evening, indeed, we have been treated to a lecture that should set us all thinking about our food selection, our food handling, and food safety issues. Professor Dampton, thank you very much for this lecture. Let's recognize him again. In addition to this, he has demonstrated that you don't forget those who have helped you as you move through this ladder of life. His acknowledgement of all these people is a testimony of who he is and the fact that he hasn't forgotten anyone. And thank you for coming to this very important lecture. Thank you. I didn't want him to forget the president of the academy, past president of the academy, vice president of the academy, fellows of the academy, your excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. We have some few announcements. We would like to acknowledge the presence of the following schools. First, Accra Academy. I think I'm going to break protocol by asking if you can sing your school song for the... Oh, you don't have any. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I better not wade into uh, a situation where what might come out might end up uh, embarrassing them. So I'll spare you. <laughs> and then we also have Accra Whistler Girls. 
uh, school here. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if we're excited about this evening, there's more ahead. And we have three inaugural lectures scheduled for this, uh, the next few months. The first is on 25th of August, 2017, and it's going to be by Professor Akusia Adumaku Ampofo. The title, the topic is, Who Are We and Whose Are We? Identity and Transforming the Nation. I don't know who she's going to talk about, so you better come to know who are we and whose are we. So please make a date, come on on 25th August, which is a Friday, to listen to Professor Kosu Adumako and Fofo on who are we and whose are we. The next inaugural lecture would be on 1st of September 2017, also a Friday at 5.30 p.m. And this will be by Dr. Richard Frimpon upon on the topic the government of Ghana and international arbitration. So please make a date, 1st September 2017, to listen to the government of Ghana and international uh, arbitration, not administration, international arbitration. The last but not the least for this period will come on on se so, sorry, 27th of September at 5.30 again here, and it will be by Professor Hans Edudapa. This will be on achieving food and nutrition security through plant breeding. Achieving food and, nut and nutrition security through plant breeding. Please, let's make a date. Leave our, uh, our calendars on those days so that we'll be able to come and listen to these people. We have come to the end of today's uh, program, and we would want to stand up as the, the party proceeds, please. My sin and shame that held me bound. Oh, Nisha, Yano, you're the God of awesome wonders. I tasted of your power. Oh, Nisha, Yano, oh, Nisha. 